Hi everybody, this is TNK64 Chess Course. Um, and for my first YouTube video, I'd like to discuss um, the capabilities of the chess program SCID. Okay, so this is the SCID program. Um, this is our board here. And these are some of our customization options. You might notice I have this notation window open. And what this does is it records the moves of any open game. I currently have the game open Adrian's M versus Dekic J. Um, this is because it's the first game alphabetically in the database I'm using. And if we just go through all this, um, we can see that uh, black eventually comes out on top. Um, since he's up a piece and two pawns and um, white is now forced. White is now forced um, to take on c6, which would really not be a good option. And considering that he's playing a 2300 player, as you can see here, um, I think resigning is long overdue. But nonetheless, that's just the notation window and the games that can be displayed. So let's just have a basic overlook of the features available in Skid. Okay, so this thing you'll notice here. Um, this uh, toggles on and off its white box we see here. And this white box um, it shows whose move it is. So currently it's a white box on white side of the board. And, okay, we'll just put in D4. And then we see a, now we see a black box on black side of the board. So just if you, you know, like leave the board for half an hour to have lunch or something like that, you can just toggle on this feature and even if your notation window is screwed up or if you're not quite familiar with algebraic notation yet, you can still see whose move it is. The next thing you should see as an option is uh, these coordinates. These are very helpful if you are still learning um, how to play chess. Um, or more specifically, how to write down the moves when playing chess. Um, I, I like to keep them on just for the sake of visual. Um, because I think it's more aesthetically pleasing. But, um, and next, by clicking this box, we can uh, flip the board. So, so, for example, if you're analysing a game of your own, um, and you played black, then you're probably going to want to be able to see things from the black side of the board, because um, it's easier to analyse your game um, from your perspective. Okay, so next we have start and stop trial mode, and what this just allows is um, us to see how another variation would have folded. So let's just say that um, I'm out of book already, and I wanted to try the Dutch, see how the Dutch would work. I can just do that, um, and then we just go off trial mode, and it's good as new. So for example, we decided on uh, uh, two weakening to the king. Well, fair enough. So we're not going to play the Dutch. Okay. This next feature is auto play moves. So if you're um, just wanting to see the moves played at a regular basis. Um, I'll be a rather slow one. Um, you can just see it played almost as a film with this autoplay move. And just clicking it again, you can stop that. Uh, the next we have this light bulb, and this is opens up the comment editor. We'll discuss more about that later. Um, and this just this plus V, um, it does what you'd expect it to do. It can add an extra variation. So here in the game, uh, black played D5. But suppose we want to show that uh, bishop g7 is also a viable move for black in this position. Um, then we click plus v, and we can see that it's got a new variation there. We just add in bishop to g7. And, you know, we can add our own little comment. Um, if we just open up this light bulb again, the king's Indian defense. You know, something like that. You can, ah, uh, you know, to create a variation. Okay. Yeah, this leaves the current variation. So suppose I want to go back to the main game. You can just click that. Or if you want, you can just click on the other move. But uh, that's always there for you as well. And then we just have these go to the end of the game, so we can see the final position. 
go to the start, go forward one move, go backward one move, etc. Just uh, rather basic stuff there. Okay, so next we have these buttons that are above these buttons. So we've got two layers of buttons here, and most of these ones are for opening a window. So this one here allows us to start slash stop an analysis engine. Um, and we'll go into that a bit later. Um, oh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, I'll just open it for the sake of it. Um, sorry about that. Uh, you know, we can just get Houdini to analyze it, so... Uh, or any engine you want. Uh, two engines, uh, Toga and Skidlet. I think one called Phalanx might also come with it, I'm not entirely sure. Um, certainly though, those two engines come pre-packaged with it. Um, and you can use them to analyze your games. It doesn't really matter what engine you use, technically Houdini is the strongest in the world, but whether you're having a 2900 or a 2950 analyzing your game, unless you're a 2800 yourself, it's really not going to matter. Okay, next we have a uh, show tournament cross table. So um, this particular game it was played in a tournament um, between Adrians and Dekic, and this is a... So it was played at the Budapest Open 1996, as we can see here. Budapest Open 1996. Um, you know, you can just look for Dekic here, or wherever he is. Um, as we can see, it's a pretty strong tournament. Um, so yeah, although it seems that not all uh, games from this tournament have been entered in. But yeah, th that's um. It's also good to see your rating performance. So if you're entering in your own games, um, this can be really good um, just to see if you don't know the rating system, or if you're just too lazy. <laughs> Do you bother with all that calculating? Um, this can be good to see your FIDE performance and uh, how this will affect your rating. So this guy, he had a performance rating of 2711, which is a phenomenal performance rating, really. Um, and he's going to gain 36 points in this tournament. So, yeah. Um, so he's going to gain 26 points. Plus 26, I'm not sure what that quite means. Okay, <laughs> the next option we have is the tree. And this is good um, for opening theory uh, as well as just for finding games. Um, so here we can see all the lists of the lists of all the moves that have been played here uh, from the ridiculous like H4 to the much sounder like C4 which controls D5. Um, and, uh, you know, you can play through these games, um, you can also just see, take a look at the best games, so here we've got a couple of games between Kramnik and Kasparov, um, and then Kasparov and Kramnik, so we can see, like, games between a lot of really strong players, um, and the way they calculate that is they sum up the two ELO ratings, so that does have, that does come with the unfortunate cost of so, for example, Katablinka, who lived in a time for ratings, um, yeah, you're not going to see them, but uh, the next, we have to show graph for this, so, you know, like we can see, okay, this has been played 55%, uh, this has been played 105,495 times, uh, white scores 55%, this has been played uh, 87,718 times, um, and white scores 56%. And you can also see, like, the average score for white. So you can see that E6 and C5, um, both perform better than average, whereas G6, D6, E5, and ellipses, I think that refers to everything else. Um, maybe that's C6, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's everything else, uh, they tend to perform worse, uh, better for white. Um, and we've also got um, toggles automatic refreshing. So, say we want to keep the tree open, but we don't want to like lose the few seconds um, every move. Uh, you can just turn that off. Um, and uh, w one thing that's really uh, cool about this is that it uses a dynamic uh, win window. So. Um, 
instead of like taking five minutes to load the, the entire bit database at the start, it takes, you know, it's like uh, 20, 30 seconds, and then it loads each position dynamically. Um, and in this way, it's much faster than chess base. I'm assuming that you're using uh, skid files and not PGN as I am, um, in which case the, your speed will be negatively affected. Okay. So yeah, we'll just close the tree window. Um, also, what's worth noting with these windows is you have these um, options regarding it. Like we can save the cache file, file cache with base, cache files, best games list. You know, we can open all this stuff. We can mask. You know, uh, this is good for all training. Let's see what that does. Uh, okay, that's gonna ask us our moves. Um, yeah, okay. So we need to guess what like the most common move is. Um, so in our case, it's D4. Um, okay, so they want us to play F5, I don't know, I don't know, so, Knight F6, you know, ah, it's just the definition of training, but you've got some good options just by clicking this downward triangle here. Okay, so I'm just going to close the tree window. Okay, after the tree, eco browser, um, so this shows all the eco codes, um, you know, so, uh, E4 is B00, A, C zero zero A it's like the French variation of E four. And there's the Queen's pawn game and there's the Neo Indian. Um you know, so I if you're fluent in your eco language then I suppose this could be helpful to you, but um for the rest of us it's probably not. Um and h here there's the maintenance window, so we can just like edit some basic stuff about this, you know, like um, flags, I'm not sure what that is, uh, you know, so we can label this a white opening, a novelty, a pawn structure, stuff like that, we can add spell checking, um, it's just data, options with the database, um, and there's the tournament finder, so, you know, they can say, oh yeah, I want a tournament played in the 1800s, um, so just go update, and, uh, uh, it should load a bit. Um, oh, pardon me, uh, 1800, <laughs> uh, let's say 1800 to 1900, and then just do question mark if you want to restrict. And you know, here we can see all these games played between 1800 and 1900. Um, or all these tournaments, uh, more specifically, like Copen Copenhagen, uh, Hamburg, these are all pretty strong tournaments. I mean, you know, Mises, Alaska, Shigorin, um, Blumenthal, Pillsbury, oh, Schlechter, Pillsbury again, Alaska again. You know, they're, they're strong tournaments. Okay. Um, so next is the PGN. So that's just if you want to close this. I personally prefer to do that, but, you know. And then there's the game list window, so it shows all the games that's played in alphabetical order. So Adrian's just the first, and then we just get a stack of Jacob Agard games. Um, Jacob Agard being a, being a prolific chess author as well as a player. I suggest you read some of his books, because they're quite interesting actually. Um, you know, like you can go further in. <laughs> and we're still at Jacob Agard uh, at 114. Oh well, um, so yeah, uh, and there's a database switcher, so suppose I have another database, and in fact I do, so let's just open that one as well, uh, my games, um, and so now I can, just to open up the tree to demonstrate it, uh, here's a game I played against a guy named Sam Glusman, um, and I can switch between these two databases, um, And that's a really nice feature. And eventually I got really lucky and won uh, in a very complicated king and pawn ending. Um, after a rather poorly played opening, I might add. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, okay, so we're in the My Games database. Let's just switch to the Million database. Um,
and that's just a really cool feature. 